in the previous section, I gave you guys a reading task. One of the readings was Buffer's Seed Pitch Deck. Buffer is a famous SaaS startup, and this is the actual pitch deck that they used to raise their first round of equity capital. Buffer raised $450,000 at a post money valuation of $5 million with this pitch deck in December 2011. I hope that you have gone through the deck already. If you haven't, I'm going to go through the slides one by one. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read a slide. We are going to analyze Buffer's pitch deck like a VC would have in 2011. By the end of this video, you should make up your mind on whether you want to invest or pass on the deal. The deck starts by setting the context of Buffer around the growth of social media. It quotes Zuckerberg's law, which emphasizes that people are sharing more on social media than before. The slide also mentions the growth of social media marketing, which is the use of social media by businesses to gain customers. This question further foreshadows that Buffer is probably a tool for social media marketing. And here's what Buffer actually does. Cue your updates. So Buffer is a SaaS tool that allows people to queue and plan their social media updates rather than posting in real time. Now, you may be wondering why anyone would want to use this. It's not like posting something on Facebook or Twitter is hard. To understand this, think about the power users of social media. Businesses or influencers who make 10 or more posts every week and who also need to cross post every update on multiple channels on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok. A power user may want to think up all their updates on a weekend and schedule their posts for the following weeks in advance. So they don't have to remember to log into multiple channels every day and make the posts manually. A SaaS tool that allows such planning and scheduling could save quite some hassle for a power user. The next slide shows Buffer's current traction. They already have 800 paying users and an ARR of $150,000 by the time they are pitching for seed capital. Based on these numbers, can you calculate Buffer's MRR or monthly recurring revenue? If you need a quick refresher on basic SaaS metrics, please see the previous video in this course by tapping on the banner at the top right corner. So, what's Buffer's current MRR? Just divide ARR by 12 to get MRR. It is $12,500. Also, what's Buffer's ARPU or average revenue per user per month? Can you calculate it with the data on this slide? Well. All the MRR is coming only from the 800 paying users. So ARPU is MRR divided by 800, which is $15.6 per month. Now, this slide also says that Buffer has 55,000 users. This means that most of the users are free users. Only 800 users are paying users, which is less than 2% of total users. Next. Notice Buffer's gross margin. Buffer has 97% gross margin. In a previous video in this course, I explained that SaaS companies have very high gross margins because of the iron law of gross margins. You can find that video if you tap on the banner at the top right corner. The iron law of gross margins says that if your business has defensibility, your price and cost get unlinked and your price gets linked to the benefit you provide to your customers. In Buffer's case, the benefit question for a power user is whether paying $15 a month is better than the hassle they must otherwise undergo daily. Finally, notice that Buffer is growing users at 40% per month. This is stupendous growth. If this monthly growth rate is sustained, Buffer will grow users by 57 times every year. If ARR also grows at the same rate, ARR will reach $8.5 million in just one year. If you were a VC, here's how you would probably be thinking at this point. If I invest half a million dollars at a post money valuation of $5 million today, I will own 10% of Buffer. And if this growth would sustain, Buffer would probably be valued at at least 
10 times its ARR after one year, which would be $85 million. So my 10% then will be worth $8.5 million, 17 times my investment in just one year. Looks great, doesn't it? So at this point in Buffer's pitch, what's your verdict? Invest in Buffer or pass? Think about it and note what you're thinking before you proceed. This slide talks about the milestones that Buffer has already achieved, as well as the milestones they want to achieve in the future. Dates in green are future dates, dates in gray are past dates. So, Buffer wants to reach 1 million users by January 2013, about two years from now, and is projecting that it will have a revenue of $3.6 million at that time. So, clearly Buffer does not expect to sustain its 40% month-on-month growth rate. This should dampen your high hopes from Buffer that you may have formed in the previous slide. This next slide explains Buffer's business model. Buffer has a freemium model for its SaaS. So core features are available for free to everyone, but users must pay a subscription to unlock advanced features. And Buffer expects 2% of all its free users to become paying users. These would usually be power users who benefit most from the advanced features not available in the free plan. Next, Buffer is assuming 5% churn and is linking churn to LTV or lifetime value in this sentence. So, this is most likely gross MRR churn and not net MRR churn or logo churn because the LTV formula uses gross MRR churn and not other churn metrics. But is this 5% churn monthly or is it annual churn? Can you figure it out from the information on this slide? Let's assume this 5% is annual gross MRR churn and then let's calculate LTV using the LTV formula. We know from previous slides that Buffer's ARPU is $15 per month and gross margin is 97%. With these numbers, we would get LTV of almost $3,500, not $240 that Buffer is claiming. On the other hand, if the 5% is monthly gross MRR churn and we now plug the values in the LTV formula, we get an LTV of $291, much closer to Buffer's value. And instead of 97% gross margin, if we assume 80% gross margin, we will get the exact LTV of $240 that Buffer is claiming. Maybe they have assumed that their current 97% gross margin is not sustainable and that they will make 80% gross margin in the long run. Either way, this makes it clear that Buffer has 5% gross MRR churn every month. This is terrible, catastrophic actually. This means that more than half of Buffer's customers will cancel their subscriptions before the end of every year. Such high churn usually indicates that the startup hasn't achieved product market fit. Maybe it is able to get customers to subscribe initially, but customers seem to cancel their subscription soon afterward. Anything more than 2% monthly gross MRR churn is a massive red flag. Also notice that Buffer expects that an LTV of $240 will allow them to spend up to $5 to acquire a free user. How did they come up with this calculation? Can you figure out why $240 of LTV allows them to spend $5 to acquire a free user? Think of Buffer's user conversion funnel. Buffer expects each paid user to pay them $240 in its lifetime. They also expect to convert 2% of all free users into paid users, which means that the lifetime value of a free user is 2% of the lifetime value of a paid user, and 2% of $240 is $4.8 which may be rounded to $5 like Buffer has done here. If this was not intuitive, let's break it down. If Buffer gets 100 free users, it expects two of them to become paid users and pay it $240 each for a total of $480. So the break even cost of each of those 100 free users is 480 divided by 100, which is $4.8. Finally, to complete the picture of Buffer's user conversion funnel, also note that Buffer has a website signup rate of 6%, which means that of all the visitors that visit Buffer's website, 6% sign up to their free plan. 
Also, Buffer expects to have $3.6 million in annual revenue when it hits 1 million users. Because of their 1 million users, only 2% will be paying users. And each paying user will pay them $15 per month. So their revenue will be $300,000 per month, which is $3.6 million per year. Now that you understand the economics of this business, what's your verdict? Invest or pass? Note down your verdict before proceeding. Moving on, on the next slide, Buffer again reinforces the exponential growth of social media back in 2011. This slide is self-explanatory. Read this slide. What are they saying on this slide? Why should a social media scheduler integrate with Reader, Pocket and Feedly, which are newsreader apps that people use to consume news articles? Well, so people can share news articles that they like on their social media channels through Buffer. But why is this slide important? Why is it part of Buffer's pitch deck? Why should investors care how many integrations Buffer has with other apps? And what does Buffer mean when they say that they plan to become the default sharing standard in any app? Why should a tweet scheduler become a standard for sharing content? The answer to the first question is defensibility. This is the defensibility slide. If you have gone through the VC Loves Game framework in course two of the specialization, you know that defensibility is a key criterion for VC investment. Buffer is telling investors that the integrations that it is making with newsreader apps make it difficult for power users to replace Buffer because the replacement may not have these integrations which will make the replacement a worse product. Buffer is also hinting with this image that these integrations are a limited resource, which will be exhausted soon. A newsreader app is probably not going to make dozens of sharing integrations. So if Buffer captures space in the sharing widget of newsreader apps quickly, it will be difficult for late movers to mount a challenge. The answer to the second question is that these integrations also form a network effect with the flywheel perspective. If Buffer integrates quickly with the most popular newsreader apps, other newsreader apps will also want to integrate with Buffer because their users will come to expect a Buffer sharing integration. And this dynamic is a flywheel, which will make Buffer the method of choice for users to share news articles to their social media channels. But this reality did not materialize. Buffer did not become the sharing standard that it wanted to be. Can you guess why? Why didn't Buffer become the sharing standard for everyone despite its lead in the integration flywheel? Because the iOS and Android operating systems made Buffer's integrations useless by launching methods for in-app communication that allowed any app to share links and articles with other apps through the operating system without the need for any custom integration. This was a kind of incumbent response. Next, this is the competitive landscape slide. Take a close look at it. Pause the video if you need to. Did you notice that Buffer has not included itself in the scheduling apps cluster? Why? Isn't Buffer a scheduling app? Then why hasn't it included itself in that cluster along with Twoffer and others? For a VC looking at this slide critically, it signals that Buffer does not want to think of itself as a scheduling app anymore. Why? Probably because either that space has become too crowded and Buffer cannot differentiate itself anymore, or because that space is too small and Buffer wants to aspire to play in a much larger space. Either way, a perceptive VC will probably guess that Buffer is in the middle of a pivot away from the small or crowded space of scheduling apps into the adjacent space of sharing that is still unproven. If you're an aspiring entrepreneur, what you should take away from this is that what you omit in a VC pitch matters as much as what you say. The last two slides are self-explanatory. So, what's your final verdict? Invest or pass? Also, 
Now that you have seen the deck, what do you think is Buffer's biggest weakness? What's Buffer's Achilles heel that will deter you from investing? Does such a weakness exist? Or are you completely convinced that this is going to be a great business that will generate the outsized returns that a VC needs? If you have gone through the VC Loves Game framework, you can use it to structure your thoughts and answer this question. Some students in my MBA class answer that Buffer's biggest weakness is defensibility. They contend that Buffer's power users have very low switching cost to other social media schedulers and that the high monthly churn of 5% is a result of the low switching cost. I agree with this analysis, but I think there's an even bigger weakness. Other students think that Buffer's biggest weakness is incumbent response, that social networks will launch their own scheduling capability in the future, which will make Buffer useless. I think this is a weaker position because of two reasons. First, if a social network builds a scheduler for power users, it will discourage those users from visiting the network frequently, which will mean that they will see their feeds less and engage less with other posts. This would conflict with the social network's core engagement goals. So such a feature is less likely to be built and promoted by a social network. Secondly, Buffer allows a power user to cross post to multiple social networks. And even if a social network were to build a scheduler for itself, it is quite unlikely that it will build a cross posting scheduler that posts to other competing social networks. In fact, if your view in 2011 was that the future will have many more social networks and power users will use all of them simultaneously, then a cross-posting scheduler like Buffer would have made a lot of sense. There's another weakness, however, which is much starker than either of these. Did you identify it? If you haven't, I will give you the answer at the end of this course. In the next video, we will look at how Buffer grew over the years after 2011. We will also explore how Buffer is one of the weirdest companies that you will ever come across. Hey there, I'm KJ Saxena, founder of Relentless VC. The video you just watched is part of the Venture Capital and Entrepreneurship Specialization, which is available absolutely for free on relentless.ventures. Go check it out. If you're a tech startup founder and want to raise money from us, you should apply on our website. Lastly, if you like this video, do subscribe and share it with your friends.